Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is understanding vectors and their direction. Here's what we wish to answer. What is a vector? How are vectors represented by diagrams? And how can you determine the direction of a vector and represent the direction of a vector? The quantities that we will study in physics are either going to be vector quantities or scalar quantities. And here's the difference. A vector quantity is a quantity that is fully described by a magnitude and a direction. When we say magnitude, we mean a numerical value. There are several examples of vectors, some of them of which you've already studied. For instance, displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, and momentum are all examples of vector quantities. In physics, we often use arrows to represent vector quantities in diagrams. We refer to these arrows as vector arrows. You've likely seen this already because in free body diagrams, we represent the force vectors that act upon an object. And in motion diagrams, we represent the velocity in the acceleration vectors that an object experiences. In both of these cases, the length of the vector arrow is representative of the magnitude of the vector, and the direction in which the arrow points is representative of the direction of the vector. As mentioned, vectors have a magnitude and a direction. In the next video of this series, we'll be discussing how to use a scale diagram to represent a vector's magnitude. The focus of this video is upon how do you represent the direction of a vector. A vector's direction can be described as being right or left or up or down, north, south, east, or west. We often utilize a bird's eye view of a situation for a diagram. In such a case, we use the usual cardinal directions of a compass to indicate the direction of a vector. Like we describe it as being north or south or east or west. If you have a vector and you have to determine its direction, it's an easy task if you have a protractor. All you have to do is drag the protractor so that the origin of the protractor matches up with the tail of the vector. When we say tail of the vector, we mean this point at the very bottom of the vector as shown in the diagram. A vector has a tail and an arrowhead and you want to drag the protractor to the tail of the vector. It's the origin of the protractor that you want to drag there. Here are six examples of how it's done. In this animation, you'll notice how the protractor is dragged such that the origin lines up with the tail of the vector. Once done, a reading is made off of the protractor. All you have to do to make the reading is look where the arrow goes through the perimeter of the protractor and just read the value that's there. This protractor is just perfect for reading the direction of vectors because zero degrees is set up with east and all the other directions are counterclockwise angles of rotation from east. The counterclockwise from east convention is not the only convention for measuring the direction of vectors. Another convention involves expressing the direction of a vector as the angle of rotation that that vector makes relative to one of the two nearest cardinal positions. For instance, this vector that you see in the diagram is pointing 30 degrees west of north. In saying it this way, what we mean is that if you started the vector at north and then rotated it, you can either rotate it eastward or westward from north. In saying it's 30 degrees west of north means that we're rotating it towards the west cardinal point by an angle of 30 degrees. Here's a second example. We could describe this vector as being 30 degrees east of south. In saying it this way, we mean start the vector at south and then rotate it one way or the other. Your two possibilities are east or west. In this case, we're rotating it towards the east, a direction of 30 degrees, a 30 degree angle from south towards the east. When we use this convention, there are usually two ways of saying the same thing. For instance, if you look at this diagram, you'll notice there's a vector on the left that is described as being 60 degrees west of north. That is, starting from north, all we have to do is rotate the vector 60 degrees towards the west. And on the right side, we see that it's the same vector in the same direction, but we would describe it differently as being 30 degrees north of west. Both these ways of expressing the direction of this vector are equivalent to one another. So as you see, there are always two ways of expressing the direction of a vector using this convention. 
Oh, we've done it. We know what a vector is, we know how to represent vectors in diagrams, and we now know how to determine and describe the direction of a vector. It's at this time in every video I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for helping you make the learning stick. But before I help you out with that action plan, I was wondering if you could help us out. If you enjoyed the video, why don't you press the like button or maybe even subscribe to our channel to get notifications when new videos come out. Or if you have a question or comment, leave it down below in the description section. Now for the action plan. At our website, we have a section called Concept Builders, and in the Concept Builder section is a perfect practice waiting for you called the Direction of Vectors. It goes along perfectly with this particular video. We have a series of apps known as the Minds on Physics apps. If you go get app number one, one of the modules on app number one is called Vectors and Projectiles, and it's Mission V. P1 that goes along perfectly with this video. Finally, we have a tutorial at our website, and if you go to the third chapter of the tutorial, you'll find there's a page there called Vectors, the Direction of Vectors, and it's just a perfect written reference to follow up with this video. Whatever you do, wish you the best of luck.